Well, welcome to Create Talks. I am with a dear friend, Lisa Crumpton from South Africa, Yay. Johannesburg. So a shout out to South Africa. Yeah. We love you. Yes. Yay. I brought my <laughs> necklace. This is such a beautiful flower. Oh, the flower. protea. The protea oh, from that. South Africa, yes. which I got. Yeah. And I, I was just there just last year. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing what God was doing. And oh, I could just stay there forever and be with you guys. It's so <laughs> much fun. And, but Lisa, you have been involved in the arts for a long time, but tell us a little bit about your background. I mean, how did you get started in leading an arts movement in South Africa? Well, I studied fine art when I finished school and got married in my final year. And, um, and you know that life is not logical. So <laughs> through the, the non-logical side of life working out, I only started painting nine years later. Wow. And that was around 2002. And um, did florals and landscapes, had some work in galleries. Um, but something extraordinary happened when I visited Bethel. Wow. What year was that? 2008. How? Oh, yeah. Yes. So what happened was a few months before that, I was at a conference in my hometown in South Africa and two of the speakers came to me separately and they said there's a church in Redding California you have to get to because they paint on stage Wow and so John my husband had um, arranged for a group of people to come to see Bill Johnson <laughs> and when I discovered that this was the same place where they were going to paint on stage I'm like I'm so glad I'm on the right tour <laughs> and um, we we got to to church, and my husband had already been in a in an earlier meeting, um, and so I got to the doors, and I couldn't get in because he had my name badge in the auditorium, and so they said you may not go in. And I said, how am I supposed to get in? So it was this um, difficult start, but somebody somebody just um, went in, got the badge, and, and I went in. And it was during the first worship song that as I watched them paint, I knew I had got what I came for. Wow, that's amazing. And, um, and it wasn't just what I saw, it was really the atmosphere, because it was such a, a rich moment of, of God being in a place, and without any understanding knowing that I had got what I came for. Wow. From there, um, from, it was, I think we were here for about a four or five day conference. Um, I had long blonde hair then too, and my head shook, not like this, but like this. <laughs> um, and had that ever happened before? Never happened before. <laughs> and, and so I don't know what happened with the people behind me even while I was sitting. <laughs> And um, but my head shook for a number of days. I didn't know exactly why, but the spirit of God was on me, and um, and so that was that was a very very significant moment. Yeah. Wow. Now you went back to South Africa, and yeah. how did you begin doing prophetic art? What what? How did that encounter here at Bethel in two thousand and eight? How did that change your life? So. Um, there were quite a few details that are really part of a, a bigger story and so when we got back from that um, trip here I was I was very unwell I caught one of the flu bugs and I oh. was two weeks um, in in bed h hardly got up and I had we have a, f a family at that time of three young boys and um, so mommy had been away for five weeks um, and as soon as I could I was getting back into getting the house in order um, and I remember finishing unpacking my stuff two weeks after getting home and looking in my bag and we had invested in some art materials because we knew I would come home and paint on stage. We didn't have a stage at that time but next to the musicians and so I'd seen these, this art material and I thought this would be perfect for that kind of public space. Come and on. it was, they were called um, art... Um, Oil, oil, not oil pastels, but um, oil bars. And I thought, they're just like crayons. This would be so easy. <laughs> <laughs> but this was a huge investment. And so I looked at them, and I felt so 
desperate because I had come home, I knew I had got what I, what I, what I went for, and this, this moment of starting the prophetic art journey just seemed so far away. And so a couple of weeks after that even, I, was, um, I said, I have to do this and I have to do this soon. And we had a three-day prayer and fasting at our church. And, and um, I phoned up a friend who does um, very inspired movement and dance. And I said, you will dance, I will paint. And I took these oil bars in our small prayer room at the time. And we, we put worship music on and I, and I started. Come on. And that, that painting was um, just the opening to my, to my journey. And it, it sold, a, a good friend bought it. It was a, it was a good piece of art, but much more than that, um, the subject was open heaven. And that's been my journey. The journey has been an wow. open heaven. And, and she bought it to, to celebrate me in coming into to something new. And she, she still, she has it in a prominent place in her home and she looks at it and, um, and she knows what it means. And, it, and, and so she takes on this open heaven for everything that she does. So from there, um, I got a painting ready for the Sunday morning. And it was a large painting, very ambitious, started with oil paints. <laughs> and, um, and, and later that week, I got a phone call, and the phone call went like this. Lisa, during the night, about four or five days after that service, I was having a panic attack at 2 a.m. in the morning, and I was calling on the name of the Lord to calm me down in my head and my heart, and it wasn't working. And as I was calling on the name of the Lord, your painting came into my mind's eye. The subject of the painting was kind of cyclical. It was um, abstract, but circles coming into a calm space. And she said, I, I, I became part of that painting all of a sudden. And all of a sudden came into that calm space and the panic attack subsided. And I knew then why I was going to be painting in church. <laughs> that it was way beyond just the subject. Come it, on. It, it was about the process. It was about what happens while people watch you create. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Lisa, you, you started something that I know when I've been there just to see the level of what God did and does in in the church is huge. But You've also gone into the marketplace as well, which is another big footprint that you created in the whole arts movement yeah. in South Africa. I mean, it's crazy how your people are starting to like process, okay, I can take creative, creative ways out into the marketplace. And you guys do this in the malls in different areas. So share with us about what you've done and why that's so important in South Africa, because a lot of people that are watching right now, they've never heard of the power of what can happen as we take creativity out. Because it's one thing to do it in worship and for people to see what God's doing, but it's a whole other level yeah. to do it outside. So share some of the testimonies and some of the stuff that's that's happened. Yeah. In fact, one of your trips, you came to our flea market. Yes, yeah. that was so much fun. So we hired a place in the flea market near to our church and we had uh, one of the, the stalls was um, a table with artists and we called it Soul Art, S-O-U-L, Soul Art. And people could come and sit and get a drawing. So there would be a team of us and we would draw four people at the same, four different people at the same time. And um, there are countless stories to be told because we, we did it for years. Um, the one day that I was there, a lady um, rushed to the table, sat down, said, is there a place for me? And I um, said, am I in time? <laughs> and I said, yeah, you're in time. And we were there for the whole day. <laughs> you're here. Just, you're, this I, is your appointment. <laughs> I've, just, <laughs> I've just got off work and somebody, she was a pharmacist, somebody had told her about what happens in this flea market. Wow. And she had such an anticipation for her moment to get a drawing that she thought she was going to be late. <laughs> <laughs> That's and, awesome. And so she sat down, we gave her her drawing, and, um, and so we saw many people, apart from the, the healing, um, many people crying 
as a result of the picture that they received. But families would come past very skeptical and they would say, my child will get a drawing, you know, like my child wow. will get their face painted. But their child um, would sit down and they would be very intrigued, pretend that they're not <laughs> looking, but very intrigued. And then we would say to them, would you like a drawing too? And they felt safe enough. They would sit down. We would draw for the whole family. Wow. And it would, it would move people um, in, in wherever they were at because it touched their hearts. Yeah. But I would watch them walk away and they would hold their drawings like you had given them a precious gift. Absolutely. So, so it ministered in amazing. so many ways to people. It's crazy. I, I just want to like encourage those that are watching that, that what God has inside of you in creativity, whether it's music or art or dance or fashion or writing, like when you go outside in the marketplace and you give it away, it just transforms people. Like last night, all of us as artists here, we went out into the mall here in Reading and some of people they bought small pumpkins which they painted and they put the word creativity or life or whatever and then we all made cards and we saw people get healed get um, prophesied over uh, business owners get transformed people that were just walking around that didn't know that they were loved in costume got completely wrecked by God yeah. and yeah. what we don't realize is the power of God's love that is transformed through creativity what we do it's crazy yeah I love it. I have one more story. Yeah, she's got another story. Come on. <laughs> Are you enjoying this? Hey, let, let us know. Share this on Facebook. And if you have any questions, let us know too. So recently, um, through um, a lady I know well in our church, she said, um, do you have a painting to give to somebody who's in government office? And so I, I chose a painting, a large painting, and we presented it. Eight of us went into her office. She loves God, um, a, a medical doctor, so she's in health and social development. And we sat in her boardroom. They had the painting up already in a prominent position. Wow. And through the painting, we prophesied. Um, she got out her phone immediately, started recording, so a high value for God's voice, um, then called in other colleagues. But the, the richness of the moment for me was the painting was of one of our provinces, a bit like a state, we only have four, um, that's known as a, a sort of a poverty, a place where things don't go well and the land is barren. And it, it was a painting of the land, because I come from that province, um, that the, the, the color of the land was vibrant and, and um, attractive and really beautiful colors I'd used. And so it was speaking of a transformation, God coming into a barren place Come and on. and bringing life. Also in the picture wow. was an aloe. I don't know if you get aloes here. It's a, a, an orange, yes. orange flower. Yeah. It's, a, it's a plant known for its healing. And, and then there was a river running through it. And so she's in the health sector changing our nation. Um, the, the, the aloe is saying healing is coming and it can come in many different ways wow. and the river representing life life will come through the work that they do in this government office not only that the two iconic South African leaders Nelson Mandela, Thabo and Becky come from that region they were built, born there Wow! Come and, on. and in their time of office they did what they could to transform our nation yeah. and so it's, it's a painting that's speaking many things, but I, I was so um, honored to be able to have a voice Come in on. that place. Um, we said many things, we loved them, we blessed them, but that painting will continually speak way beyond the words that we speak. It's, it's crazy <laughs> because like I had the privilege of also doing a painting that is yeah hanging up in this person, this lawyer who works with Mike Pence. It's crazy how we don't realize the power of creativity that continually, like art can continue to prophesy from generation to generation. It's yeah. just crazy. I, I want you to, if you have any words of knowledge, I one do. of the things like we love, as you know, and you have people that need to be watching us, so tell them, but I, I wanted you to like sharing your words of knowledge that you have for people 
that are watching right now and uh, just share your heart. Yeah. So um, there's somebody who, hearing that story, has a painting that's been highlighted to you. And <laughs> you now know who to give it to. Come on. So I'm asking the Lord to give you what it takes to make that connection, um, to give you the access to that office, to that person. And you may or may not get the moment we got to prophesy with words, but your painting is a prayer. And your painting will continually speak to that person. Um, can I just say that the painting and giving that painting make the most of that moment that you're given. Um, give it in a ceremony if you can, even if yeah, it's just between you and that person. Yes. But make sure there's an unveiling. People also value the moment of, of you giving the artwork. And really, we, I, I want to piggyback on that because I yeah. feel like there's other people that I mean, it doesn't even have to be government official. No, it doesn't. You can give it to a store owner. You can That's give right. it to someone who is elderly, who, who no one ever has touched. Yeah. You can give it to somebody who's a, a single mom, and it's a picture yeah. of hope. But whatever it is, realize that God is highlighting what you're creating. And even some of you that have a heart for music, you can write something. Yeah. Those of you that have a heart for fashion, you can create something. But whatever you're doing, realize like God wants you to to know that it's this thing inside of you is meant to come out by asking Holy Spirit and you're the Holy Spirit woman <laughs> she is such the Holy Spirit woman but why do you think that arts are so important in transformation of culture tell me a little bit about just what you've seen in South Africa and, and what your heart is yeah. because you really have a heart for for God to do something much larger than just even what what na what just one nation, so share your heart. Yeah, it's it's a big question, and um, <laughs> you know I, me, I like <laughs> to ask some big questions. Um, I don't even have I have some answers, and I think I'm exploring that. Yeah. But I know South Africa is a very very creative nation. Yeah. It has a, a unique um, creativity and innovation in it and on it yeah and through artists who love God through his yeah. glory coming on what they do because yeah, he put it in us on. That's if right. we don't develop if we don't develop what he put inside of us we don't have the moments of giving him glory through the talents we have yeah come on that's really easily seen Ooh. in musicians yes um, and so they write a song and they become famous and so um, it's a slightly different journey, but it's exactly the same for an artist. If you don't paint the picture, how do you become famous and famous for Him? How do people get the message that God puts talents inside of us? So Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa, yeah. it's, it's famous for many, many reasons. But if he did not paint that picture, That's right. we wouldn't have everything that it brings to us today and so South Africa is is using its its voice in the arts and it's being used politically it's being used in the scourge of, of many things that are going wrong but the artists are producing work uh, that have a voice come on and sometimes it's not easy to hear or see or listen to but they are using their voice um, because that's what God put on creatives yeah if you don't use your voice people won't see or hear you won't make a mark in history um, because many words are spoken but they're not necessarily documented and a, but a picture documents the moment and I, I really want to get a, give a shout out because there are people right now that are watching that you have friends that you know have a talent and they're just sitting on it and yeah. they're not doing anything yeah. with it. I want you to share this post and get the word out yeah. and start to change the way that they think about themselves. Some people need a nudge. They need to see a person like what Lisa's doing, what I'm doing to transform culture yeah. and to say, hey, it's time for you to see what you can take. It's huge. Yeah. And also a shout out to the UK. Thanks for <laughs> joining South Africa. We love you. Europe and America, we just thank you for joining us. Uh, 
But I really, I mean, part of this journey that we've talked about today is the fact that you stewarded something that you saw here. Yes. And then you brought it home. Yeah. And you said, I'm going to take the oil pastels. I'm going to start with just worship. You started with what you had. Mm -hmm. And then look at what's happening. I mean, yeah. when Kevin and I have done conferences there and when I've done creative stuff, all the people that are coming from the different regions and the different churches, they're all so hungry for this. Yeah. yeah. And I want you just to impart yeah. and pray for people because I think, Lisa, you, you carry... A mantle upon you of awakening up the artisans yeah so yeah. get ready you guys know the position <laughs> put your hands up and Lisa's gonna impart yeah. to you and pray for you so Holy Spirit come and breathe on the work of the hands of your fine artists yes. of your creatives yes. of your innovators yes, Lord. I see the breath of God sure. coming and, and, and there are a few of you that are really being impacted right now and you're receiving what God has, but there's going to be evidence today and tomorrow of what he's given you. Yeah. And that evidence will come in the artworks that you do. Come on. They don't have to be big or grand, but you do need to capture the oh. moment and say, Holy Spirit, come and breathe on what you're doing. Give anointing, give power, give your oil. You, we need your oil of anointing to come into our gift because that then you do much more than we can do and so just praise you for the gifts you give but much more than that what you do when we give our gifts back to you yeah. oh wow that, did you feel that okay <laughs> I want you to look for changes put it on my Facebook of what God's doing and how you were impacted by Lisa share this post with so many different people and let's see a creative renaissance so thanks for joining Create Talks. Yay. Thanks, thanks, Lisa, Teresa. for joining. <laughs> and we're going to be painting on Thursday night together yeah, at Buffalo, yeah. which I'm so awesome. excited about. See you next week. <laughs>